Hey guys, Scope here. We are back with more Let's Play Mega Man Battle Network 5 Team Colonel Part 53 for the fourth time. That's right, this is take four. Um, the reason for that is because I'm trying something new to try and record from the emulator to make it better quality, slightly better, pretty much as good as it can get because um, how I was doing it before, before recording straight through the built-in AVI recorder from the... Uh, emulator doesn't yield the best possible quality but it's easy but you know it's getting to that point where I need to quit going with easy and start just going with what's better so I'm trying something new out here let me know what you guys think the video quality should be better um, the sound quality should be the same like my voice should be the same but the video game sound should also be the same pretty much just the video quality should be as crisp and frame rate should be as good as if you're playing the game right there so this should be the absolute best possible quality um, yeah, and the reason, another reason I'm doing this is because the advantage of recording like this is I can now uh, save state and load state without stopping the emulator. Because before that would stop the built-in AVI recording from recording because it would mess up some option. They conflicted. The point is I can do it now. Not that I need to or that I will utilize save states now, but it's just nice that that's options there in case it ever is needed. And the... Um, the other nice thing is in case I use the fast forward function, which I probably also won't, it will not mess up the recording, and I don't have to sync the sound in, whereas before I had to throw the recording in virtual dub in order to get it to sync up, right, the game audio with the game footage. Now it just does it automatically. And also, one last thing it does that's really nice is... Um, Oh yeah, now I can go over 20 minutes, because before the built-in AVI recorder, after 20 minutes, it would start screwing up the game footage, so I always had to kind of like limit myself. But now, if we mistakenly go over, you know, for some odd reason, then it's okay, we don't have to worry about it. Anyway, so now that we have that out of the way, um, I came back to this vision burst in the last episode. Because in the last episode, we came here and talked to, um, or heard Gramps and Wiley talking, but then we got jacked out automatically to go to bed. Um, no, we don't want to jack out. But what you want to do is head all the way back here because there's actually something you can pick up here in this copy machine bin. Discarded copies are collected here. Oh, <gasps> look! There's something else amid the paper! And it's a regular up one. Who ah That's right. So you do have to come back here. It's kind of a dick move that they make you do that, but... Oh well. So now you can jack out, and um, what you're supposed to do now is go to bed, which is what Mega Man will tell you, which will... Take us into the next chapter, which is attacking Nebula's uh, headquarters. As the team said, tomorrow is the day to do that, so, you know, that's good. But first, there's a few things I want to do. Well, actually, just one thing. As you'll see, I've grinded up to exactly 50 bug frags. What I did is I went to the internet, just checked Green Mystery data for bug frags, and the best way to get bug frags, I believe, is in the internet, run into random battles, and when there's a Green Mystery data in the battle, there is a you know, like 30% chance or something like that, that it'll be bug frags and you'll get like two or three. That's the best way to really do it. Just kind of, you know, play it and fast forward if you need to. Just kind of do it. So I grinded for a few hours, got up to 50 bug frags. Now, the reason I spent all that energy to do that is because we want to go to the bug frag trader in under that three and we want to buy the attack plus 30 chip because it's getting really late in the game. The next chapter is the last one. So that attack plus 30 is going to be so useful. You guys have no idea. Because if you add 30 attack onto each one of the snakes that's doing damage in our Draconis folder, that makes it so much more powerful. And also if you even add that onto one of the Vulcan 3s, that's 30 extra damage per hit. And it's a 7 hit combo. So it's really, really devastating. So we do want to pick that up now. It's definitely worth grinding to do so. So we're just going to head over to the Undernet 3 and I'll take you guys with me. Actually, isn't it Undernet 2? Yeah, because Undernet 3 is the net dealer. And we don't need to talk to him. All we need to talk to is the bug frag trader. So something else you guys will notice is we're not running into any battles here. So obviously I have the sneak run chip equipped. But something else you might notice, I'll just uh, show you here, is if we check Mega Man's Navicust out, we've got attack speed charge all level 5. So what I did is I went through and pretty much found all the codes to compress my Navicust uh, programs. If you want to find them, go to GameFAQs.com, they're there. All you have to do is uh, highlight the chip you want to compress here on the screen, and hold the right button down and then enter a certain code, that's A, B, L, or R. And uh, once you enter the code, one block will be taken off of your chips, or your programs. So as you can see, Sneak Run is now just a four-square program. Custom 1, we removed that stupid piece that was right here. 
And um, we also compressed attack, charge, and speed max. So speed max is only two squares now. Um, charge max you can fit in a little corner, it's three squares here. And attack max we got rid of one of the stupid things. And also, look at this, Undershirt is now just one piece, one little program. So that's really easy to place. So as you can see right now, I've just got, um, I've got all the max buster parts right here. That way our buster is going to be maxed out no matter what. And I still fit the custom one, Undershirt, and Sneak Run in here. Now later when we're in battles and I'm not worrying about like battles, I'm going to remove the Sneak Run and put Custom 2 in here because I also compressed that, it's a lot smaller. We should be able to fit it in here, no problem. So that's what I went and did with the NaviCust. And also, since we're so powerful now, I think um, since we went and got all those HP memories, I believe we will not run into battles on the internet now either with Sneak Run on. I'm pretty sure the battles are dependent, like how many battles you run into via Sneak Run is dependent on how much HP you have. So that could explain why suddenly we're not running into battles down here. It would make a lot of sense now, wouldn't it? Oh, there's Lark Man. Lark on my go-kart, you know. Okay, we're back. Sorry about that, guys. So what was I saying? Uh, Lark on my go-kart? I don't know. Anyway, so we're just going to head through the Undernet here, almost to Undernet 2. Yeah, so these green mystery datas, I would definitely pick them up if I were you and you were in need of bug frags because those probably hold the best amounts of bug frags or likeliness to hold bug frags, so there you go. Alright, so the bug frag locator, or the bug frag guy, in case you don't remember, is located down here past this, into this first warp pad. Right here. There you go. And then up here, the whoop, that's not the run button, is the Undernet BBS. It's got a few new posts if you want to check it out. And then Bug Frag Trade right here. So now we want to talk to this guy and buy our attack plus 30 star. Oh yeah, and that's a mega chip naturally, so definitely want to be putting that in our folder. So I'm going to replace it with one of the chips we weren't using before. Um, one of the ones we're not supposed to have in there. For example, um, Double Crack, because those aren't super useful. Alright, and then let's uh, arrange it by ID. There you go. Also, something else I did off screen is I went back to Undernet 4 and I did the Liberation mission again for Dark Colonel, beat him in 9 phases. So if you beat it in 9 or 10 phases, this is the chip you get. Colonel C. Does 160 damage. It's a Mega Chip, a Navi Chip. Uh, if the enemy's in the same row, it will do a slice attack that does 160 damage, naturally. So, really good chip. Definitely want to pick it up. That's the only way you can get it. And that's really all we have to do now. So now we can jack out now that we got our attack plus 30. Now that we've done with that little detour. And now we can head to bed. And end this chapter off. Sweet! Anywho. What's up? Sleep well, today's the final battle. Yeah, like a log. Let's go meet the others. In front of Higsby's, yes, that is where they will be. Let's not forget to say bye to mom. Oh, that's right. When it's over, we'll say we're home with Dad. Oh, baby. We can only hope, right? Alright, what's up, Mom? I'm leaving, Mom. Take care of your father. Leave it to me. I promise I'll bring him back. Okay. <laughs> I just love how, like, this is our fourth... This is, like, our fifth, uh... You know, our fifth rodeo, if you will. So, like, she's already used to us leaving four times to go and save the world from imminent destruction. So, at this point, she's just like, Alright, be home for dinner. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, if you head over here, you'll notice our whole team is assembled out in front of Higsby's, naturally. But since we uh, started a new chapter here, a few things are going to be different. And we want to go check those out. Because they will help us immensely before our journey to Nebula. So now that everybody knows that we are pretty much part of um, the anti-Nebula Corps and we're going to stop Nebula now, everybody will be a lot more friendlier than they were before. For example, this guy. It's for you. And he gives us a regular up too. Good luck, there is nothing I can say, but... But what? Gotta finish your sentence there, bro. Anyway, once he gives us that regular up too, that will push us right over the limit to 45 megabytes of memory. So that means instead of having a fast gauge preset, we now want to preset full cust, because that gives you essentially an extra turn right at the beginning of battle in case you don't get enough chips. So that's really, 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 really good. And it is star code, and it takes exactly 45 megabytes, and that's definitely the chip you want to have um, preset for this folder. It helps a lot in quick liberations. So with that, we're pretty good. There's one more thing we could check out before we go and rendezvous with the team. 
that we can now get in this chapter, and that's an end city. So cue the tin tower music. Ba -da 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 -da. I don't know. Mega Man. The Mega Man games kind of like to use famous music a lot. Like I know Mega Man Legends one and two actually, or Mega Man Legends, the final battle was um was a composition by Bach. I don't remember which movement it was exactly. And then I know um, when you're in Mega Man Legends two, when you're on the Sulphur Bottom ship, they actually play uh, the Spring of the Four Seasons from Vivaldi, which is really cool because I love that. I love that. Uh, Composition. All right, and this guy you want to talk to? I hear this on the balcony. He wasn't here before. Guard Castle knows you're one of the team of navvies. I feel bad making kids fight on our behalf, but I'm too weak right now to join the battle. Please take this. So since he can't help us out and he knows we're going to save Nebula, this guy helps us out by giving us an HP memory. So with that, we're at 800 HP. That means only 10 HP memories left in the game, and four of which we cannot get till the post game from a shop, and are going to be super expensive. But there's a few more I think we can't get till after the game too, so we're not going to be able to max out before the final ending thing here, but uh, we'll be able to get pretty close. I know we'll be able to pick up a few more at least. I feel like I'm talking really fast. I better slow down, man. Slow your roll, you know. Anyway, now we can head back to ACDC, the DCAC, and talk to our team members. What's up, guys? Whoa, 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 whoa. There you are. Hey! I'm gonna clobber Regal and save my dad. Where's Nebula's home base anyway? It's at the highest point in Electopia. The highest point in Electopia. <gasps> not Mount Bellinus! Please, not Mount Bellinus! Bingo, at 12,389 feet, it's the highest point in Electopia. I believe that's I believe that's pretty high as uh pretty close to our highest point in the world, which I believe is Mount Everest in China. And I think that's somewhere around 13,000 feet. I wanna say 30,000, but I know that's not right because that's how high planes fly. But I could be wrong, because I know people have climbed to the peak of Mount Everest. Um, I mean, it's dangerous, but I know people have done it. Yeah, so how are we going to get up to the crater barrel? Yeah, no, we're not going to climb. That would be ridiculous. He's arranged for a chopper, so you know we got to get to the chopper. Oh, oh, it's coming right now. Okay. Right on cue. Right on target. So there's the shadow of it. Of course, they couldn't render a whole sprite, and that would take too much work. All right, so let's head to the nebula base. Cool. Oh, everybody's on board. Let's get in. You got company, Lan. I'll wait in the chopper. Hurry up. And of course he says he's going to wait in the chopper, but he just stands there because once again, they don't want to render a sprite of somebody having to do something, because that would be too much work. Hey guys, why didn't you tell us you're leaving? I know we can really be a much use to you guys, but we can handle the wearing department. Lan, you better come back in one piece. Come on guys, I'll bring Gutsman Roll and Glide back with me, you'll see. I won't be gone long. Well, I better get going now. Peace out. Lan, promise you'll be careful. For sure. Let's net battle when you get back. <laughs> yeah, right, dude. You're not going to have any... I've got. I've gained so much better chips over the course of this game and, like, HP. That's something I don't get, too. Like, in between the games, they don't really explain how Mega Man and... Or, like, loses his HP memory and all the good chips he's got and everything in Navicus programs. That's another reason I like Mega Man Legends 1 and 2 better than these games. That's why those are my favorite, because that just that little thing, like at the beginning of the game, Roll says, oh, by the way, I sold all your special weapons for money to fix the flutter, you know? It's like very little work that programmers had to put in the game, but it's just enough to, you know, explain, to just link together that missing link, the continuity. It just it makes it much more enjoyable. All right, and we're off to Mount Bellinus several hours after leaving ACDC town. They reach the top of Mount Bellinus, site of Nebula's base and a dormant volcano. Bum bum bum! Oh man, check this place out. This is Nebula's home base, home of the Dark Chip Syndicate. Is it, in Pokemon Call, every time I hear that word Syndicate, it reminds me of Pokemon Coliseum because Cypher is the, you know, Shadow Pokemon Syndicate from there in that game. Syndicate, such a good word. Barrel, we've come this far, let's get in there. Let me take the lead. Fool. Excuse me, Dusk? You can't just rush blindly into the enemy's home base. Leave this one to me. Alright, and uh, Dusk being the sneaky assassin that he is, he's gonna sneak around and try to find a better entrance to Nebula, because obviously they're not just gonna leave the front door open. So let's uh, let him do some reconnaissance behind enemy lines. And we'll wait. We'll wait for that call. 
Jeez, 10 minutes we waited here? Crikey, you think they would have spotted us by now? The back entrance. Okay, got it. What was that? Answer me! Dusk! Dusk! Aw, oh, shit. Has Dusk been captured? Feral, what happened to Dusk? Dunno, I lost the signal. Hey, fool, now look what happened to you showing off. We can't just sit here now. Let's go, leader. Right. To the back entrance. Hurry! Okay, so um, we're still not at the point of no return, even here in the last chapter. If you want to, you can still take this chopper back to uh, ACDC and explore around, and then just in front of Higsby's shop, get back in the chopper, and you'll head back here. So pretty much all of these ways are dead ends. Just follow the path I'm going, dead end over there. And if you come up front here and check the door, it's locked tight. Find another way. That's right, naturally. And over here is another dead end. But right around here is our team waiting. There seems to be a secret door in there. Go! This is Nebula's hideout, huh? Let's smash it! I'm Higgs, the lone wolf, huh? I'm not scared. I'm not scared at all, huh? Naturally. I've done a lot of investigative assignments, but this is the scariest by far. This place is totally terrifying. But there's no turning back. Let's do our best. <laughs> Who's your favorite voice I do, guys? I want to know. That would be interesting to note. Okay, so we're going to jack into this thing here. If you talk to it, it will say how it takes the magma and turns it into electricity, and that you can jack into it. And you definitely want to do that, because in the bottom left of the pipe comp, you will find... HP memory! That takes us to 820. Awesome. So now we're going to jack out. Oh, naturally. There we go. Alright, and we're going to save right here, because this is the back entrance we want to head into, but there's going to be a bunch of cutscenes, so... We're just going to stop here. I will see you guys next time on Let's Play Mega Man Battle Network 5 Team Colonel, where we attack the Nebula Base head-on. See you guys then.